and and even where we are now, we've been leasing for, I don't know, 14, 15 years or something like that. And I'd always told the Lord, you know, I watched other churches and other ministries and they had their own facilities and a sense of purpose and permanence. And I always told the Lord, I said, you know, I know you're doing good things in our ministry, but it, I would like to have our own building. So that we don't have, and Cornerstone has been so gracious to us, but I don't want to have to ask permission. If we want to call an op night, we're going to call an op night. Hallelujah. There is, in this 96,000 square foot building on the end, there is a 10,000 square foot event center that we own. That is amazing. We can have so many great times for the women or youth or men's ministry um, and just to see what the Lord is doing. All right. This is our next step. And this is really probably the only time that you'll ever hear me uh, mention this. Uh, We need at least $12 million. Go ahead and take a breath. We need at least at least $12 million because I am believing and I've prophesied this over the years to our church that when God give us our own building it would be paid for and I believe that when we go into that building and celebrate in the month of November that we won't owe one penny hallelujah not one dime For that building. And so I'm making a a commitment to you. We're not doing a stewardship program. I'm not going to ask you for pledges. I will tell you this, that we've already had somebody say, I want to be the first one to make a donation on this new building. And they wrote us a check for $750,000. So this is the kind of stuff that God's doing. And I am I'm appealing around the world. I make no apologies for this. This is a God portal. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are touching the world. We need state-of-the-art. Hallelujah. Broadcasting abilities. We need state-of-the-art television cameras. We need state-of-the-art screens up here that will be on our platform. We are going to shake the nations by the power of the Holy Ghost. And so you mark it down. You're going to be amazed at what God begins to do supernaturally. And for those of you that are watching around the world that God has blessed, you will never find better soil to plant in than Regeneration Nashville. And over the years, I've watched a lot of appeals for money. And it's always, well, you know, if you just sow the seed, then, then God will bless. That's not necessarily true. There are, there are laws of harvest that govern what you get out of the soil. And you can take good seed and plant it in the wrong time of year and it won't produce. We are in the right season in this church. The other thing that hardly anybody will ever talk about is you can take good seed in the right climate, put it in the wrong soil, and it won't produce. And my wife over the years have been in places to where we sowed supernaturally And we couldn't figure out why we were not blessed financially because we were putting good seed in bad soil. And this is good soil. And God will bring, I told the Lord, I said, I don't want us to be a 30-fold or a 60-fold church. I want us to be a 100-fold church. So we are believing by faith that God, hallelujah, this, this is God's house. 
God started this church, except the Lord build the house, they that build the house, build it in vain. And this is God's house, and the miracles that, that we have recounted today are just a trickle of what we're getting ready to see. And so uh, we're planning on probably trying to center our fall conference just around our celebration of moving into that facility. And so I want you to just begin to ask God to give us divine favor, that everything will go smooth. Uh, we've really had very favorable response from the city of Goodlettsville. They seem to be thrilled the fact that we're moving into that realm. And so uh, this is going to be really, really nice. Um, I've had people say, you know, they'll put up a tent. I don't want to put up a tent. <laughs> Amen. The blessings of God are chasing us and overtaking us. Sunday. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you that we do not have to take a back seat. And we are not going to embrace this old charismatic Pentecostal mentality where we just get enough to get by. No, I want more than enough. Exceeding, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Hallelujah. According to what God does. And so, this year, we are going to see God. We are putting our hands on our faith. We are seeing God do something supernatural and, it, I, and I really believe this. We came out of January because we actually got this contract signed last Sunday. We are coming out of January in intercessory prayer with a building and a very strong possibility that we can stay here while we build that. That's God. Hallelujah. That is God. And... We are, I am so grateful to the Lord. Amen. Amen. For what he has done. Did I leave anything out? No? We're good? All right, let's stand. No, I'm kidding. We're going to, I want to preach to you a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> I want us to, uh, you can go with me to the book of Psalms chapter 100 because this has really been resonating in my spirit the last two days. Uh, we had a tremendous prayer meeting yesterday. Um, I, I, I cannot get over how many people come to prayer meeting in this church. I, I mean, we must have had two, three hundred people in here, and you all know how to pray. Amen. You seek God. Norm, is so great to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is just doing great things. Psalms chapter 100, um, we've quoted this scripture many times, we've read it many times, but it's something that God, I felt I put in my spirit. Um, in fact, we're just going to read the whole chapter. Verse 1, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. That's one thing I appreciate about Jasmine is, boy, she knows how to bring a joyful noise into this house. Going to church should make you feel better when you leave than when you came. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And I want to encourage you, if we, in your prayer time, a really great way to start it is when you begin to pray. I like to walk when I pray. And when I went into prayer this morning, uh, I begin to sing. Old songs will come up to me, or I'll, I'll write my own. <laughs> but just what's in your spirit, hallelujah. Come before his presence with singing, hallelujah. And there are so many things that open up when you begin to do that. Next verse is a great verse. Know ye, or you need to know <clears throat> that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us and not we ourselves. We didn't come from a Big Bang Theory. We are His people 
and the sheep of his pasture. That should put some safety in your spirit. Verse 4. <clears throat> this is what I want to preach to you a little bit. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. <clears throat> and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. One of the things that the enemy is trying to do to so many people right now is take your shout. Hallelujah. And your victory is in your shout. Hallelujah. Shout unto the Lord. That's what the Bible talks about. It doesn't matter. It's not based on your circumstances. It's based on who you know God is. And when the enemy can take your shout, then he'll take your praise. When he takes your praise, then your womb is empty of the miraculous. Because, hallelujah, when you begin to be thankful unto God, thanksgiving is the womb of praise. So when David begins to write this admonishment to us, he says, you need, when you're coming into the gates of the Lord, the entrance of where God is, I said, you need to come with thanksgiving. And we as Christians, many, many times have been tricked by the enemy that we stop being thankful for what God has already done because we're due too disappointed about what we feel like God should be doing right now. And I've learned over the years that when I'm having a difficult time, even breaking through in prayer, the way that I break through is I begin to go back and recount to God what he's already done. Hallelujah. I want to thank you, Lord, that you've done this. And I want to thank you, Lord. Begin to name specifics. I want to thank you, God. When I look at Sandra and Pastor Harry, I want to thank the Lord that when their son got stabbed in the heart with a knife by another guy that was mad, that he didn't die. I want to thank the Lord that when she lay with her heart wide open, an open heart surgery, she came out fine in the name of the Lord. I want to thank you, God, that my son's not in hell today but he's in heaven set free by the power of God I want to thank you God that when we've been transient and we've had no place of our own that we didn't die but the spirit of the Lord settled down upon us I want to thank you God that we survived the coronavirus I want to thank you God that Becky Bowman is not dead I want to thank you God that you're alive and well I want to thank you God, uh, that you came through uh, in the evening time. Uh, I want to thank you, God, uh, that you saved me, uh, delivered me, uh, and set me free. Uh, I want to thank you, Lord, uh, that you rule and reign. I wrote down some verses that talk about things to be thankful for. His deeds. First Chronicles 16 34, his mercy. Ezra 3 11, cause he's good. Psalms 34, for his holiness. Psalm 75, 1, his wondrous works. Matthew 15, 36, for food and sustenance. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, because he gives us the victory. 2 Corinthians 2, 14, because he always causes us to triumph. 2 Corinthians 8, 16, for his earnest care. 2 Corinthians 9, 15, for his un 
unspeakable gift. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 20, for all things. Uh, Colossians 1, 12, uh, for the inheritance of the saints. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, for everything. Uh, hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 15, uh, for his name. Uh, and Revelations 11, 17, uh, because he reigns. When the enemy can rob you for being thankful, he will bring you to a standstill in your walk. And even the Bible says in the last days, a spirit of unthankfulness will become loose in the earth. And see, Thanksgiving, the Lord said this. He said, in Psalms, he said, you never get in my courts where praise is unless you can enter first with thanksgiving. He said, you want to come through my gates? He said, thanksgiving is the key that unlocks the gates that will let you in. The word courts there means settled abode. It means things that have been already taken care of. That when you get into the presence of the Lord, you just don't waltz in. There is, you get around a lot of people, and, and they just bleed. I got people that, I'm so thankful for caller ID. I'm guilty, I screen calls. <clears throat> and don't act like y'all don't do that, because I know you do. <laughs> but that name will come up, and I go, nope. <laughs> there are people that I specifically, when I shake their hand, I never go, how you doing? <laughs> Not very good. So you just open Pandora's box. Don't want to hear it. Everybody has things they have to deal with. You determine your destiny by the gratefulness in your spirit. I told my wife the other day, I said, for the first time in my life, I feel like that if God never does anything else, I can say, I feel like I fulfill my purpose. Amen. Everything I've ever asked God for, I've seen him do in the last couple of years. When I, when I look at this church, you will never know how difficult it is for a pastor to spend hours in preparation and to walk into the sanctuary and see 28 people. And you know you've paid the price. And you know that, that what you're offering works. And so I never, ever get over walking out here and looking at you and seeing what God has done. And now to see God give us our own building. I just, I just told the Lord, I said... You can take me home now. It's all right because I feel like, but it's, we learned over the years, as many of you, that in the difficult moments, you still thank God. So when you begin to do that and you begin to, to release thanksgiving, thanksgiving, you know what it is? It's the praise of yesterday. And praise is the thanksgiving of tomorrow. But you can never be able to get into the presence of God and praise Him until you are first thankful. <clears throat> I am thankful 
that for the last year and a half, we've had church here. I am thankful, hallelujah, that we don't have to get up every Sunday and beg for money to meet the needs. I'm grateful, hallelujah, for our online church that we have. I'm grateful, hallelujah, for the anointing. I'm grateful for the word that God gives me every week. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful that my children serve the Lord. I'm thankful that at the age of 68 years old, I'm not in a wheelchair or I barely can barely get up on the platform. I'm thankful that I'm not an old wineskin. I thank God for you. I make mention of you in my prayers. I thank God for your prayer life. I thank God for your faith. I thank God, hallelujah, that you stand in the gap and tell hell, no, no, no. I thank God that you are full of the Holy Ghost. I thank God, hallelujah, that you and I will reign together in eternity. But oh, we are just getting warmed up. What we are thankful for now is is causing us to declare something by the Spirit. Thanksgiving just gets you in the gate. But praise determines your future. How many of you ever read the little book by Charles Cap about your mouth and what you speak? If you never read that, I would encourage every single person in this building. It's, it's just a really small book. It literally changed my life. Because without realizing over the years, I was letting the devil curse me with my own mouth. And sometimes the enemy will allow you to see the blessings of others to discourage you. Make you feel like, what happens to everybody else? Why don't it happen to me? Listen, we reap what we sow. And when you learn how to begin, when, when you get in a realm of thanksgiving, you can't be thankful and complain at the same time. Bitter and sweet don't come out of the same mouth. You can't in one moment be going, Lord, you're so great. And the other moment, oh, boy, I just wish I was dead. And there's nothing works. And it doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. You got to praise God. You got to release the gratefulness to the Lord. And what we're doing in this building is we are thanking God today. We are celebrating what God has already done. But I can tell you this our thanksgiving of today is declaring our future of tomorrow. What we are doing now, hallelujah, at the end of this message, I'm going to bring you up to the front. And we're going to begin to praise God. You know what praise is? It's prophesying what God has yet to do tomorrow. Hallelujah, that you are declaring things that are not as though they were. You are declaring a thing, and God is doing that. It doesn't matter how impossible it looks. It doesn't matter how inenable it looks, but it is by the power of God. If you'd have told me two years ago you need $12 million, I'd have said you've lost your mind. Now it just seems like somebody just write a check, and let's go ahead and get on with building the the kingdom of the Lord. For my God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. In fact, not only is the blessing of the Lord on this house, hear me, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God said, I'm getting ready to release on you personally an outpouring of the glory and of the blessing and of the majesty of God. Praise gives you the right to walk through the storehouse of the Lord and go, I want that. I want that. I want that. It's not greed. When you fall in love with Jesus, 
you will find that the blessings that he gives you will never separate you from him. When Israel was getting ready to take the city of Jericho, they had never had any war in the land of Canaan. It's interesting that of all the cities that God tells them to go after, it's the city of Jericho. Jericho was the most fortified and largest city in Canaan. It was impregnable with its walls. It, they said three chariots could ride abreast on top. That's how thick it was. And you have a group of people that have no skills, really. They don't have any, they've not been trained in war. They, they don't have any of those things. And the Lord just tells them, he said, I want you to walk around the walls every day for six days. And then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around seven times. And, and I wondered if the reason God was having them do that is because the very fact that they were obedient, they were thinking, I wonder what God's going to do. Something was building in them. I think that God was building a shout in them. And they are defenseless. They're probably being mocked from the people on top of the walls. And every day they circle, the walls didn't get smaller. Their faith got bigger. For many of you, your enemy will never get any smaller. Your faith will just become greater than your enemy. The moment that your faith <clears throat> reaches over. Sula has been coming to the warehouse during the month of January and praying and, and seeking God. And you've needed a green card, right? Is it a green card? But anyway, something in there. And, and God just did an amazing miracle in the month of January. Through the power of prayer. And when you circle, when you get around your enemy or you get around your insurmountable problem, don't let the size of it intimidate you. How many times did we meet with our staff and everything we looked at fell through until we finally, finally we've made a statement, there's nothing out there. If you either find a warehouse and there was no parking, or if let's find something else and it's too far away, or else you find something else and, and there's just no way that we can afford it. And everything that we went through until one day, God just, in the midst of our thanksgiving, in the midst of our prayer, hallelujah, God begins to break something in the spirit of the Lord. There are strongholds that are being broken right now in the name of Jesus in this building. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. <clears throat> I feel within my spirit that we are no longer having to ask God to do it. Praise will get there before you do. Hallelujah. When you begin to praise God, it will show up before you ever physically get there. My God, the praise of the Lord, the blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. They run right past us. Hallelujah. That when we get there, we find out that our praise present it went before us by the Spirit of the Lord. May God put a shout in your spirit. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't no matter what your problem is, uh, if God is able, he will go before you. Uh, I bind every demon. Uh, I bind every hindrance. Uh, I bind the spirit of unbelief. Uh, we bind the spirit of unthankfulness. Uh, and we loose the glory of God. You have to live in the realm of praise. Listen, once you get in his presence, once you get in the courts, don't leave. Let your thankfulness unlock the gate. And once you get in there, stay there. Hallelujah. Don't come back out. Live there. 
One verse talks about, said, he inhabiteth the praises of Israel. God, he lives in the midst of praise. You think about it. When you go back and you read the 150th Psalm, which is the last Psalm, the last chapter of the book of Psalms. David has talked about the crucifixion of Christ. He's talked about everything that you can think of in the book of Psalms. He deals with everything. And yet he ends that book with let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. He doesn't end it with, Lord, let me triumph over my enemies. Or he doesn't end it with, Lord, I'm maligned and I don't know how I'm going to make it. He doesn't talk about how the wicked prosper. He ends it by saying this. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise him in a sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of the heavens. Praise him with a loud sounding cymbal. Praise him in the song. Praise him in the dance. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Why? Because there is no greater weapon that you will ever possess in your lifetime than the spirit of praise that comes up out of your spirits. Hallelujah. Praise is prophesying by faith. It's not true prophetic, true prophecy is is thus saith the Lord. That's God saying it. All right? That's, you're not putting words in God's mouth. God is speaking that. But we can also declare things prophetically by faith. Prophetically, it seems you're reaching into the future. And so many, many times in prayer, I prophesy to myself And I will begin to declare, Lord, I thank you that this is going to happen. I want to praise you, Lord, that you're going before us right now. I want to praise you, God, that you've given us a tremendous sanctuary. I want to praise you, God, hallelujah, that we all have our own personal house. And what happens is, is when we begin to praise God, praise, hallelujah, in the courts of heaven, creates Because God's sitting there and he, he can't not withhold. He, listen, when you really love somebody and, and you know they want something, you do your best to try to get it to them. Same thing with God. The Bible says the Lord's made us and we are the sheep of his pasture. We are his people. And one of the reasons I know that God is going to do everything that he said, and I, and I can also tell you this, this is not the first building we're going to buy. I, I know that in my spirit. Hayabobo Sunday. Hallelujah. I believe that before it's over, Regeneration Nashville is going to have multiple, multiple buildings. I don't know what all God has in store, but I can sense it by the Spirit of the Lord that the days are coming when people will come and give us buildings. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> That the days are coming where I believe entire congregations will come and join themselves to this church because they are hungry for the divine presence of God. This is a house that gives God preeminence. It's not a man's house, hallelujah, but it is God's place. And whenever you give God preeminence, the supernatural begins to happen. When you see... The supernatural begin to, to take place. And, and I'm thankful for the miracles of healing that, that we have seen over the last year or so God doing this church. But I want to see more. I want to see ambulances, five and six ambulances driving up in a line and they're wheeling cots in. The Bible said that Jesus had healed, and finally, the Bible said the crowd pressed on him because they heard what he had done. There was a pressing in because of what the Lord could do. This demonic spirit of sickness that has settled down on this nation. And in the name of the Lord, we come against these pharmaceutical companies that have released poison 
And may God deal with the doctors that are in cohorts with them that prescribe all this mess when they know it doesn't work. May the Lord, hallelujah, as he did in John G. Lake's ministry, release so much healing in the Nashville, Tennessee, that hospital beds are empty, that doctors get unemployed because of the power of the Holy Ghost. May they come on a bed on one side and run off the other side of the platform in the name of Jesus. We have power over age. We have power over blindness. We have power over paralysis. We have power over cancer. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May God. Lord, I want to praise you. That the paralytics are coming up. The quapalichis are coming up. Lord Jesus, the paralyzed are dancing on the platform. I want to praise you, God, that the blind see and the deaf hear. I want to praise you. Autism is healed in the name of the Lord. I want to praise you, God, that if it not been for God, we would have perished. I'm building in you faith. Don't ever be the one that says, well, God wants to heal me. He will. I think he answered that when they let him, when he let him hit him 39 times. By his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. He wants to heal you more and you want to be healed. But you got to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got to praise God. I'm still dealing with high blood pressure. And every day I go to prayer and I tell the Lord, I want to thank you that you said nothing by any means will hurt me or harm me. And, and I, I personally, I, here's the way I feel. I don't have any problem with anybody taking high blood pressure medicine. But I, for me personally, I believe that I am in a battle because I believe God wants to release in me healing for people that have high blood pressure. And so I'm at war right now with a demon spirit of high blood pressure because I refuse to make a treaty with it. And so we're going to break this thing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Every single one of you in this building and under the sound of my voice, that's a high blood pressure. I heal you by the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Ye are my Sunday. Hallelujah. I command you, you foul demon of spirit of high blood pressure. I curse you in the name of the Lord and I lose. Hallelujah. 120 over 80 in every one of you in your bloodstream, in your heart, in the name of Jesus. Ye are Listen, hell should have left this church alone. There is so much praise in this building. What are we doing? We're praising, determining our future. The building that we have is because of the praise that we release by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, there is nothing that God cannot do for you. doesn't matter what the enemy says. Hallelujah. Talked with Becky when she's in a hospital, and they're supposed to be going on a tour, and she said, Pastor, what am I going to do? Here she is walking. Like six weeks ahead of schedule. Hallelujah. Walk right out on stage when that tour starts. Hallelujah. And then just begin to testify of the glory of God. Uh, Listen, God wants to release something in you. uh, And some of you need to begin to tell the Lord, I want to thank you. Stop worrying about what you want God to do sometime. uh, And start telling God, I'm thankful for what you've already done. Uh, If you can remember, remember what God's done. Uh, If it was not for God... A lot of us would be dead in a coffin right now. uh, And God came through. uh, Your marriage was was saved because of God. uh, Your children are healed uh, because of God. uh, You still saved yourself because of God. uh, God delivered you and set you free. 
what you will find about being thankful. It's like what my wife talked about, priming the pump. That's what Thanksgiving does. You start priming the pump, and you're dropping water in there. You're priming it, and you're saying, Lord, I want to thank you. Hallelujah. I can think of so many things that I've thanked God for. It looked like our house was going to be repossessed, or when we didn't have a job, or when we didn't have any meetings, or when Nicholas was born three months premature, and he only weighed two pounds in a hospital for three months, when we gave 50% for a year and a half and had our electricity shut off, when we drove an old van and it wouldn't hardly work, and yet we would watch God come through, when I raised my dog from the dead. Hallelujah. It just goes on and on and on and I begin to thank God and you know what you're doing you just begin to tell the Lord I want to thank you for that I thank the Lord that I can still lift weights at the age of 68 years old I thank God I tell the Lord I'm thankful when I was 20 I wonder when I'm when I'm old will I be fat and bald well I'm not so I'm thankful for that I tell the Lord God thank you for that hallelujah and you listen when you begin to tell God he smiles at your thanksgiving but when you're thanking God Pretty soon the thanksgiving that's going in uh, primes that thing uh, and praise begins to come back out. And before you know it, you shift it over from telling God I'm thankful for what you've done uh, and you're prophesying uh, about what God's getting ready to do. Uh, And then the next day, uh, what was praised before is thanksgiving today. Stand with me. I challenge you this week, doesn't matter what you're going through, I challenge you, this week, don't let anything come out of your mouth that is negative. And it's very difficult for Christians to do. Negativity is a learned behavior. Now, I also tell you this. It is a demon spirit. It will literally rob you in your future of everything that God wants to do. I don't care how bad it looks. You've got to be thankful. One of the things, the way I look at We, I may never have everything turn out exactly like I want in this life. But it's, it's a vapor. When you cross over into eternity, if you can cross over with a sweet spirit, it doesn't matter whether you drove a Volkswagen or a Mercedes. I always wanted to be tall like Steve Huffman. But in eternity, it won't matter. The enemy makes us become so caught up with the temporary. That, listen, you are just a few short years away. When the trumpet sounds, you'll take a step to put your foot on the ground. And when you put your step, you step up. And immediately the Bible says, you'll be caught away. Old things will pass away. The old body will be gone. You'll look and you go, my God, look at me. And you have an incorruptible body. You are forever in the presence of the Lord. You will have to deal with sickness, disease, sin, disappointment, the old nature, a bad boss. Doesn't matter. You are forever in eternity with Christ. Learn, hallelujah, how to put life in perspective. Did you know that everybody in this building lives better than about 70% of everybody in the world? <clears throat> the, I don't know the exact st- statistics, but... It's, it's incredibly high. It's like 40% of people around the world don't have indoor plumbing, electricity. 
Yeah, and here we are, multiple vehicles, homes, cable TV, cell phones. Go to nice restaurants. We live in a free nation. The privilege. And I want to be rambling here. I'm gonna stop. But the privilege of you and I being in this building right now. Without police coming in, it's amazing. <clears throat> so here's what we're gonna. This is how we're gonna end our service today. I want you to come with me. We're gonna fill up the front like we do, and we are going to begin to praise God. We're gonna start praising God. For what he has, he has yet to do. We want to praise God that when we move into our new facility in November, that there will be no debt, no debt. You know the Bible says in Exodus said that when Moses built the tabernacle, that the Lord told. He said, "Tell all the people he is of a willing heart. Let let them begin to bring stuff."